So now this, the next module, right? This is again uh, kind of to motivate why do you need these joint distributions and what kind of different reasonings that you could do. And we'll do some interesting reasonings on them. And I hope to make a point that these are important things which you could think of in various applications, right? And that's why you need a joint distribution as, compo as opposed to just learning the conditional distribution of probability of oil given all the other factors, right? Because if you have the joint distribution, you could do much more reasoning on top of the joint distribution, okay? So let's look at the different types of reasoning that you could do in a Bayesian network. So from now on, we'll use this notation that if I want to say that intelligence equal to high or low, I'll just call it as I0. So 0 means low, high, I1 means okay. In particular, this entire thing, I'll compactly represent it as the following. Just make sure you're comfortable with this. It's nothing great, okay? Everyone fine with this? Okay. Now the first type of reasoning that we can do is causal re reasoning. And in causal reasoning, as the name suggests, we try to do these downstream effects of various factors, right? So I would want to know what is the probability that a student will get a good recommendation letter, okay? How will you compute this probability? How do you compute this? Is this straight away given to you anywhere? No. How will you compute this probability? I mean, either you don't know or it's too obvious that you don't want to say. Which one is it? If it's the latter, please say it, right? I mean, otherwise, how will I know? How will you compute P of L1? What's that called? You will marginalize over all the variables which are of not of interest to you, right? So this is how you'll actually compute P of L1. You'll just marginalize over all the other variables and just keep the value of L as high. Is that fine? But do we have this actually? What do we have? We have the factors, right? So let's see. I'll do it once. I thought I wouldn't have to do it, but your encouraging response actually forces me to do it. Uh, so this actually factorizes as various factors. And now what I've done is just push the summations. Yeah, I just adjusted the summations so that the variables which are not important, okay? So now what I'm going to do is just use the factorized form of this. And I'll just adjust the summation so that I'm doing minimum work, right? Because when I'm inside, I'll just look at the appropriate variables and so on. And now this actually means the sum of these two terms for all possible values of the grade, okay? And so on, right? So I'll just keep doing that. So let's, uh, so this is a simplified form that I get because the last guy only depends on the grade. Okay, so I've just, I've written out the full chain rule and then I've just simplified the chain rule based on the independence assumptions that we have. So far clear, okay? Now let's look at the last form that we have and we'll focus on this guy, the red guy. Okay, now how do you compute this? You consider all possible values of the grade. So can you compute this last quantity? What will you have to do? How many of you find this plain obvious? I mean, please raise your hands. Please raise them high up. Okay, not many. Why is it so? I mean, this was just meant for the sake of completeness. I did not really intend to go over this. Can you compute this or not? I mean, everyone can compute this. How many of you can compute this probability from the given tables, please? Okay, good. So then we'll not really go over this because that's not the main point of the discussion. So it turns out that probability of getting a good recommendation letter through all this compute, and this compute depends on these five tables that you had, turns out to be 0 0.502. What you can do is you can go back and do this computation and see whether you get this value. Okay, just, I mean, for those of you, I see some doubtful faces. Uh, I'm not sure why those is not very difficult, but you can just go back and check. For now, it suffices to say that after this computation, you left with the following value, which is the probability of getting a recommendation letter is 0 0.502. What I want you to appreciate is that if you look at these tables, it was not directly obvious from anywhere that probability of getting a high letter, uh, good like a re recommendation letter is 0 0.502. But after doing all this computation involving these five tables, you can arrive at that value. Right? That's the only takeaway from what I have done so far. Okay. But there was no causal reasoning there. Right? It was just that what's the probability of getting a high recommendation letter. But typically, we are interested in questions of the following form. What if I told you that the student is not intelligent? What am I actually asking you in terms of probability? What is the probability that I'm asking you? Probability of L1 given 
i 0. Okay. Now, can you compute this probability? Can you? What would it look like? It would be something over something or something into something. Okay. So, this is how you will do it. Right? You will take the joint distribution and divide it by the marginal distribution. Right? That is simple. Okay. And now, each of these we can compute from the joint distribution by marginalizing over whatever variables are not of interest okay and this is how you would get it and now at the end of it again this computation is not important what happened here what was your initial probability of someone getting a high good recommendation letter now what has happened right so this kind of reasoning is important right you would want to know that if i change a certain factor now think of it in terms of sports or anything right if you say that this particular player is going to play today or not play then how much does the chance of winning change of course i don't know why anyone would be interested in knowing that chance for any good reason but why would you be interested in knowing that oh you are into betting is it okay good to know that okay so i mean for various reasons like or for more uh, practical things that right? if someone has this <laughs> symptom and if that symptom was not there right then what would have happened or if the symptom is added what would have happened and so on right what is the probability of a certain disease increasing or decreasing and so on. So this kind of causal reasoning where you change some factors in your, uh, where you set some values for variables in your joint distribution and see what, how it affects variables which are downstream. Why do I say they are downstream? Because these variables depend on the variables that you are setting. In particular, right, in this example, intelligence actually determines grade which in turn determines the letter of recommendation, right. Hence, when you change something in the intelligence, you will see an effect in the letter of recommendation. Is that fine? Okay. And so, this kind of reasoning is very important. The graph gives you a nice way of finding these dependencies and the factorization gives you a very efficient way of computing these probabilities, right. Okay. So, is that any, can you think of any other kind of reasoning here? This is causal reasoning. What other kind of reasoning that could be? Now, there are several other types of causal reasoning that you could do, right. Now, what if the course was easy? what would happen? Your P of L 1 was 0 0.502. Now, what am I asking you to compute? P of L 1 given D 0, right. Uh, easy is 0. What do you expect to happen? Increase or decrease? Increase, right. Because the course was easy, probably the student got a better grade, hence he or she got a better recommendation letter, right. So, all of these things are I did not unfortunately increase by a lot, but still increased by something. Okay. So, all of these are important reasonings that you would want to make in various real life situations. Right? Now, the other kind of reasoning is the reverse of this. This was causal reasoning and the other kind of reasoning is evidential reasoning. Right? So, here we reason about the causes by looking at their effects. Can you give me an example now? Probability of someone being intelligent given that that person got a good or bad recommendation letter, right. So, that is also important, right. So, now you know you have seen some causes, you have seen some effects that this person has a certain set of symptoms. Now, you are trying to reason about the different causes that could have caused that symptom, right. So, it is again very important to do this kind of reasoning. So, we know that say the probability of someone being intelligent, if you do the same mega calculation, you will come up to 0.3. Oh no, you do not need to do a mega calculation, this is directly, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is because this just does not depend on anything, right. So, you can directly read it off from the table. So, probability of someone being intelligent is 0.3, but now if I ask and the probability of the course being difficult is 0.4, what happens if you observe some effects? What if someone tells us that the student secured a C grade? Okay. Now, what is the question that I am asking actually? P of I1 given G is C. Right, that is the probability that I am asking. So, what would happen? What is your guess? First of all, can you compute this probability from the given set of data that you, I mean from the given distributions? So, that is something that you need to be very compute, uh, comfortable, right. If you have the joint distribution either in its explicit form or the factorized form, I can ask you all sorts of conditionals and mar marginals involving the random variables for which you have the joint distribution and you should be able to compute all of them. Right, and it just involves using some conditionals and some marginals. Right, that's all it boils down to. Okay, so any question that I ask you, you should be able to do it. For example, in a quiz. Right, so, okay, so what's what would happen if the student got a C grade? 
the probability of that student being intelligent would probably drop. What about the difficulty of the course? It will increase, right? So these kind of this is now evidential reasoning because you are looking at some cause and then trying to see what would have happened to the factors which could have influenced this cause. What if instead of getting to know that the student got a poor recommendation letter, suppose you know that the poor uh, student got a poor recommendation letter, then what would happen? What would your assumption about the student's intelligence be? Know that the intelligence at least does not directly seem to influence the recommendation letter, right? But there is still a path through which this influence can flow, right? So you would your plain English reasoning would be oh he or she got a poor recommendation letter which means the grade was poor which means the intelligence was not high, right? So again that is what would happen the probability that the student is intelligent would drop, okay? So all sorts of and these and other examples we could do it and okay let us see. Now suppose we look at this case and this should have been I1, uh, no wait sorry. Now suppose we know the grade as well as the recommendation letter, okay. When we knew the grade and we knew the grade was bad, we saw that this drops from 0.3 to 0.079. Now I am saying that in addition to knowing the grade, you also know that the student got a bad recommendation letter. We still end up at the same value. Why is it so? How many of you get that? Given the grade, intelligence and the recommendation letter are independent. Once you know the grade, it completely decides. I do not really need to go back and check whether the student was intelligent or not. It does not matter because irrespective of whether he or she was intelligent, as far as the grade is A or B or C, that completely determines what the recommendation letter is going to look like, right? And this case is actually very interesting and we will return back to it when we, when we talk about what are the different independencies encoded in a Bayesian network, okay? Now the third kind of reasoning is known as explaining away and this is again very interesting. Uh, so here the idea is to see how different causes of the same effect can interact with each other, okay? So we already saw that this happens. If I know the grade, the probability of the student being intelligent drops, right? Now suppose I was also told that the course was difficult. What would happen now? All of what all of you get the question? What am I asking now? P of I1 given G3 comma D1. What would happen? What will increase? The probability of the student being in. Why would it increase? Grade and I mean the intelligence and difficulty have no relation with each other, right? They are, I mean, irrespective of the Bayesian network or whatever, right? The intelligence of a student and the difficulty of a course has no relation with each other. I mean, I would independently think of setting them, making the course as hard as possible, irrespective of what's the level of the intelligence of the students and so on, right? So, why is it that knowing the difficulty level of the course should actually influence the intelligence. That does not make sense to me. What is happening here? So our belief actually improves, right? It goes up as most of you said. So why is it happening actually? Can you give me a reasoning for that? Right. So that is what is known as explaining away, right? So there are various factors, in this case two factors, which could have caused the grade to be low, right? Now I have given you one explanation that the grade is low because the course was difficult. Right? So that explains away why the grade was what it was, right? So now the intelligence does not have to be low to explain the poor grade. So that's why the, your uh, estimate of what the intelligence is in this case increases, right? And it increases by some amount. It's not that it's going to become greater than 0.3, but it improves from where it was if you knew only that the grade was poor. Now that you know that the grade was poor and the course was difficulty. It makes sense that a part of the responsibility for the course for the grade being poor lies with the difficulty of the course and not solely with the intelligence of the person, right? That is why your belief about the intelligence improves. So this is known as explaining away. So this is what you reason, right? Oh, maybe the course was just too hard and the student may have received a bad grade despite being intelligent. That is exactly what this number is telling you, right? That is the English explanation for that. And the explaining away effect could even be more dramatic, right? So let us consider the case when the grade was B actually. So now I give you I1 given G2 and I give you I1 given G2 comma D1, right? So why I say this is dramatic is because one, there is almost a double increase in your estimate of the probability once you know that the course was difficult. 
and now your estimate is actually better than the default probability that you would have assigned to someone. Right? So, these are all different types of reasonings that you could do with a Bayesian network given the joint distribution and given its factors irrespective of whether you factorize or not all this reasoning can be done right. That is one thing that I want everyone to understand whether you have the factors or not you can do this reasoning even if I give you the explicit joint distribution. Having the factors just improves the computation and also uh, make sure that the number of parameters that you are dealing with is much smaller ok. So, that these are the two things that you achieve with factorization and I will just not go into any more examples ok. Mm -hmm.